Okay, Medusa Solos part 3. It's time for Touch My Life. And I'll just give a little bit of a warning here. Uh, there's a lot of double tracking going on in this track. And uh, the solos won't be completely accurate. <laughs> but let's give it a try here. <clears throat> Let's take that first part there. Uh, it starts with... That little lick. Uh, it's, uh, it's in the key of E. And it starts by bending uh, this D note on the 7th fret on the G string up to an E note. Twice. And then it goes up to the E note 9th fret on the G string and bends that up lot <laughs> uh, all the way up to the G so that's a, a one and a half step bend you bend it and kind of staccato pick it a couple of times like that and then land on, uh, on the uh, fifth, uh, seventh fret again uh, then you take the 10th um, fret on the B string and do sort of a similar kind of bend and staccato picking. And let it down. 8th uh, fret on the B string. 10th uh, fret. Uh, yeah. Kind of just uh, go back and forth there. You can do a slight bend on the... Uh, a fret on the last note of that little lick. And then uh, you go to the 10th uh, fret again and do sort of a almost double stop bend or I think I've called it country, country style bends uh, earlier in the series. And that's just on the 10th fret. You bend the B string and just pluck the 10th uh, fret on the E string as it is. And so it, the whole lick is like that. Uh, so real slow. And then you go up to the uh, the fifteenth fret. Uh, on the B string, do sort of a kind of whining uh, bend. <laughs> so that the key part of that bend is the letdown of the bend. Uh, you shouldn't start with it pre uh, all the way fully pre-bent, but do kind of a quick bend up to a slow letdown. get that sort of sound so um, if you played it like maybe um, if you switch the timing of the bending uh, it would be more more uh, more sort of that feeling I guess uh, instead of you know <laughs> it's either like a crying whiny noise or a Car alarm. <laughs> it's more of a car alarm sound, and that's more <laughs> wine. <laughs> Anyways, uh, something like that. So it's just that bend, and uh, then you hit the fifteenth fret on the uh, E string. That last part is, of course, just down to the 12th fret. Uh, 
there's a little bit double tracking as I said, uh, so kind of hard to tell if he... I don't know if he does the bend or... Maybe it's the bend, I, I would guess. It's kind of hard to do that down there. Uh, second fret on the G string. So I use actually all three of my fingers there. And then just hit the uh, uh, third fret on the uh, B string. So it's. G string, second fret again, and then do a hammer on from the open to first fret. So you land on the E major note. Like that. And once again, hard to hear, but I think one of the guitar parts at least plays after that. So that is on the, it starts on the A string, open string, uh, second fret, and then open string on the D string. Do, do sort of, uh, isn't that a, like a Blind Faith song or some claps on deck, I think? <laughs> Or dominoes or something. Uh, something like that, yeah. Um, something like that. I, I don't know the timing of it really, but. If you play it like that, it sounds pretty, pretty close to the uh, song. That's the second fret on the D string to the second fret on the G string, and then you do that uh, zero to one hammer on again. So real slow. That sounds pretty much like uh, one of the guitar parts on the album. I think another guitar part ends with a uh, bend on the 2nd fret on the G string. Do sort of a bend, half let down, to quick bend again. Yeah, the next part. Uh, like that. Uh, and that is the uh, same notes as the intro. You take the 7th fret on the G string, uh, hammer on to the 9th fret. And then you bend that 9th fret up to the 12th. Ah. And that last uh, bend is 10th fret on the B string. And then go straight away to the 8th fret on the B string. So you don't do the let down on that. Just go straight from the bend to the plucked A thread. Oh. And you land on the ninth fret of the G string and do a heavy vibrato on that. Towards the end of the solo here, it goes up to the 12th fret and do the, the classic rock and roll lick, uh, bend the 14th on the G string, and then pluck the uh, B string on 12th fret, and then the E string on 12th fret. Then you go to the uh, 15th fret on the G string and bend up a uh, whole step. that bend, you let down the bend and uh, pull off to the 12th fret, 
and do another one, uh, another of those bends. Gotta listen to the track here again. I think that's what it plays. So that's just a couple of those. Yeah, and that's the end of the solo. So that's Touch My Life. Now let's continue with Seafull, and it starts with a uh, melody. So that part is around the uh, seventh and eighth fret mostly. Um, starts on the E string with a quick pull off from the eighth fret to the seventh fret. Then eighth fret on the B string, the ninth fret on the G string, then whole step bend on the G string. is 7th fret to 9th fret hammer on and it end with a bit of vibrato that part is a quick uh, pull off from the 8th fret to the 7th fret on the B string this time. 8th fret again, then pre bend. So that down. So like that. You pre bend it so it's basically the note on the 10th fret. Let it down to the 8th, but then you pluck the 7th uh, fret. And I think it does. One of those at the end too. No, actually he, he does uh, sort of the opposite. Instead of going from below the notes up to that note, those are the same notes, he does a pull off from above it. So basically you could do this instead. Instead of... Uh, that's sort of the... Uh, the difference between the end part of those two phrases. <clears throat> Is the same lick as the first one, but then he does a unison bends uh, first on the 15th fret on the B string, and also fret the 12th on the E string. They move that shape down uh, to the 10th and 7th fret, then to the 13th and 10th fret. So. Yeah, it also plays the last last uh, band a couple of times while while doing the vibrato on it. Uh, next part is and that is on the uh, you do one of those pull-offs again. 8th to 7th fret on the B string and then it's 7th fret on the D string uh, or 9th fret on the D string I, I meant to say to 7th fret on G string so that is and a bend on the 10th fret on the B string I gotta check out the timing here A 
couple of bends on the 10th fret to the left down and 8th fret on the B string. Yeah, uh, same thing again. one of those, yet again, country style bands. <laughs> so that's the 10th fret on the B string. You bend that up and you hit the E string on the 10th fret. Tenth to the 8th fret. So 10th fret bend, uh, left down, 8th fret B, uh, B string to be 9th fret on the G string. Back to the kind of the intro lick or first part lick. That part is the same as before, but then he plays right, and that is unison bends on the G and B string. So you have the uh, preferably ring finger on the ninth fret and the first finger on the uh, seventh fret. And just move that shape around up and down. And so it's the seventh and ninth, the uh, eighth and tenth fret, and then you do. Uh, at first, I thought he played, but he he doesn't. Uh, maybe some sometimes he does, but I think for the most part, at least he plays. So that kind of gets the same effect as. But it's it's an easier way to play it. So basically, you want that melody, right? That's another another place for that note. Uh, so it just slides down to that note. No no bend up towards it. Uh, and then you bend that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Got some light on my fretboard here. Uh, so it's bent, 7th, 9th, 8th and 10th, just to slide down with just the, on the G uh, string to the 7th fret, and then bend 7th and 5th, 7th uh, and fret the 5th. And that's it for the intro melody. Yeah, that is, you will recognize this lick from before. I think it's played like that. But that, that is basically the lick from Your Love Is Alright. Uh, it's similar, at least, but it's, you know, it's, it's one of those rock and roll cliche licks. Uh, that is, I mean, it's, it's a classic for a reason. <laughs> Is uh, around the fifth and seventh, or seventh, uh, eighth fret. Yeah, but you bend the seventh fret on the G string, fifth fret on the B string, fifth fret on the E string, uh, eighth fret on the B string, fifth fret on the B string, eighth fret on the G string, seventh fret on the G string, fifth fret on the G string, uh, seventh fret on the D string. Uh, 7th fret on the G string. <laughs> There's a lot of just numbers I'm rambling here. But... So let's start with just that part. 
really, really slow. So that after the uh, sound part on D string, you jump straight over to the G string. 7th fret, uh, fret on the G string, 7th fret on D string, 5th fret on the D string. And from there, you bend the 7th fret on the G string. So, whole lick. Two frets to the eighth and tenth. Uh, so he jumps over to the E string on the eighth fret and bends that up uh, twice to the uh, tenth fret, basically. Or three times a place. Let down, and then I think it just moves over to the seventh fret, and then move down on A minor arpeggio here. Uh, so that is after you have uh, slid down to the seventh fret, you you can just pull that off to the fifth fret, and then you have you should have your uh, index finger cross the strings here. So it's ju just fifth fret on the on all the strings almost. Uh, e string, B string, G string, and then D string. Then after that you uh, hammer on or play the uh, seventh fret on a D string before doing that bend. Kind of um, if you're not used to doing it, it's kind of a hard bend. Uh, you do it with your index finger. On the fifth fret on the G string. Oh, didn't even make the note there. <laughs> Gonna have to really tug and tug that string. So that's a whole whole step bend with your index finger. I feel now that I should have um, thinner strings on my guitar. <laughs> Fifteenth fret on the B string, couple of bends, then uh, another one of those uh, bends where you should do a quick bend up and a slow let down. Then to the thirteenth fret, still B string, and G string, twelfth fret. 14th fret, then bend up um, one and a half steps. <laughs> hard, hard for me to think right now. Let's see how many times he plays that. bends. Everyone should reach the C note that is up here on the fifth, uh, 17th fret. And that's the end of the solo. So let's see here. Uh, next part, uh, next lead part of the song is the when the melody comes back and it's around 433 or something in the track here.
it's basically the same uh, as the intro. The only difference is pretty much in the end. Uh, it plays. That's the same from the intro. Then band. Uh, unison band on the uh, ninth and seventh fret. G and B string. At tenth and eighth. Twelfth and tenth fret. Pretty much the only difference from the intro, I think. Let's see if there's a couple of licks here um, towards the end of the song. Is the A minor pentatonic shape here, uh, fifth fifth fret. So it's like that, and that is fifth to seventh fret on the D string. And uh, he doesn't reach the uh, E note here that you should reach with that bend. That would be more of a proper way. It does sort of half half note bend almost, or somewhere in between, which is a lot bluesier and suits the song very well. Something like that. Yeah, uh, kind of a similar thing. You, uh, you start with that same band. Uh, so that band twice. And that down, fifth fret, uh, G string, seventh fret on the D string. Laser. That is that's a very familiar lick once again. Uh, fifth fret, uh, seventh fret, uh, G string band. Fifth fret bar on the B and E string. Eighth fret, fifth fret B string, and then the G string. Eighth, seventh, fifth fret. Uh, seventh fret on D string, and then. Land. Do a vibrato on the fifth fret on the G string. Slow. And while while he does that vibrato on the last note, he. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he gets feedback, which I can't do here in my little apartment. But he holds that note and then just slides down to the 4th fret. Uh, while still doing that vibrato and feeding back. And then slides down to the 2nd fret. Those three notes there. So it's... Feedback. Slide down. Slide down. But yeah, that is Seafull. Okay, makes you want to cry. Uh, it's in D and it starts with a pull up flick. Like that. And that is the on the B string, the 13th, the 12th, to the 10th fret. And then you skip over to the G string and then to the D string. It's the 10th to the 12th and then you land on the 10th fret on the G string. So that lick is. Uh, slowly, that is like that. The next time it's the same lick, the only difference is the last note do uh, one of those index finger bends. Whole step up and let down. Do a little shake. Thank you. 
Like that. And it does those two phrases one more time, I think. And the next part is... And that's basically just the end part of the first lick. So it's on the D string, 10th, 12th fret, and then 10th fret on G string, and then you do one of those bends. Slowly. And the next time lick comes, it's uh, the bend twice. Just let the note ring and bend again. And you also do those two licks twice. So let's play along to the first part of the solo. Get the hair solo. Yes, he starts improvising here, and the first improvised lick is that is on the tenth fret and G string, uh, D string, twelfth fret and D string, tenth fret and G string. I, I usually hammer on those kind of things, but you could pluck it also. Bend on 12th fret, 10th fret, 12th fret, 10th fret, it's 12th uh, fret on the D string, 10th fret on the G string, so it's only on the D and G string. Even slower. Does a, one of those country style bends once again, and it's on the 12th fret on the G string and the 13th fret on the B string. I think it plucks the G string twice while doing the bend because it doesn't sound like which would be another way to play a sort of a similar lick, but it, it sounds like it does. Kind of like that. So it's it's really cool, kind of odd sound uh, that that lick. Just hits the uh, both of those strings at once there at the end. Let them ring and do a little vibrato on it. Uh, next lick is one of those rock and roll cl cliche licks again, which we love. Sounds like it does like that, and that is tw uh, 12th fret on G string, and straight over to the E string this time. Instead of hitting the B string in between, you just skip the B string and go straight to the E string. Then 13th fret on the B string, 10th fret on the B string, 13th fret on the G string, or wait, yeah, uh, 13th fret on the G string, 12th fret on the G string, uh, 10th fret on the G string, and then does one of those. It's the 12th fret on the G and B strings, and then 
sound fret on the G string. Where the 10th fret on the G string, you should bend just, just a tad. And land on the D string. So, real slow, the whole lick. Sort of a similar lick to like yeah you know, like we did before where he played uh, he played twice on the G string but here I think he plays uh, only once on the G string and then twice on the B string instead sounds like that so that is just a tw uh, 12th fret bend on the G string and hit the 13th uh, fret on the B string twice do that a couple of times. Uh, that comes after this lick. Something like that. Might have missed one of those. It's just the 10th fret to, uh, on the G string to the 12th fret on the D string. Uh, something like that. So just drawing a couple of those in between there. So yeah, uh, after those, uh, those bends there, it's let down on that bend on the 12th fret, 10th fret. to the 12th fret, 10th fret, and then over to the D string, 12th fret. So slowly that lick. After those licks he plays uh, another one of those rock and roll cliche licks. 12th fret on the G string, 10th fret on the B string, uh, on 10th fret on the E string as well, 13th fret on the B string, 10th fret on the B string, and then 13th fret bend twice. This is one of those well known, as I said, cliche licks, which is always great. Starts picking it, uh, and he also frets the tenth fret on the uh, E string, which you, which is the same note as you bend up to, and he also slings in a thirteenth fret E string somewhere in there. Sounds a little bit messy, I think, so it's kind of hard to to know exactly what it was going for here. Full step bend on the 13th fret on the E string to uh, uh, pull off. <laughs> Cause they hammer off there, but pull off 13th to 10th fret on the E string, B string uh, 13th fret, 10th fret on the um, E string, 13th fret on the G string, which is that flat five note. fret on the B string to the 12th fret on the D string. So this is sort of a tricky trick, tricky lick because it kind of is a bit of a string skipping lick. So you have to be sort of, sort of precise with it at least. 
it's real cool. So real slowly here. After that is sort of sort of that thing. Uh, this just opens up the uh, uh, relaxed right hand, does uh, some strumming, uh, mostly muted notes, uh, with a couple of stabs in between. So it's uh, basically you move move around on those two strings, the G and B strings. It's first on the tenth fret, twelfth fret, tenth fret. 10th fret. So it's just back and forth and then land on the D string on the 12th fret. So it's a stab and twice muted afterwards. Except for the last part, it's just straight away. No muted notes in between. So like that. So it helps to uh, have a good good muting technique here and I just lay pretty much all my fingers just across the, the st uh, strings here. The uh, bottom E string is muted by the thumb and the wrist has got a few fingers and then it's, I use my first finger my pinky actually for the 12th fret there. Like that. I hope you could see that. Uh, it's something that you really get the feel for if you just do it a couple of times. After that, you play It's sort of a messy lick, which is awesome. <laughs> I love messy licks. Uh, it's you just play the the same shapes that you used before with no muted notes in between. And it's just 12th fret on the G and B string, 10th fret, G and B string to 12th fret on the D string over and over again there. So that it can be quite tricky to get the to the right amount of clarity in that lick because it could sound it could sound some something like that and that it's not really how we want it to sound. We want something something more close to that, I guess. So the trick is really laying that finger down on the uh, next string set uh, at the right time. See how that works? If I do it like that. Sort of like that, I, I guess. That would be my way to play it. You could also play it like with different fingers. So you have the uh, middle finger on the D string and then lay down the ring finger on the... That's also a great way to play it. Maybe that's easier for you, so do whatever whatever works for you. Just try try both ways and see what works. He ends that phrase with the tenth fret on the G string with some vibrato on it. And then it goes back to the melody again, I think. Yeah. 
So that's just back back to the melody that we played at the beginning of the solo. <laughs> So that's just the uh, that part of the melody. It doesn't play it like it plays at the beginning of the solo, uh, because then it goes into another improvised section here. Uh, opens that. Uh, Second improvised section with band unison band uh, on the 13th fret on the B string and the, fret, the 10th fret on the E string as well. You just strum that a, strum that a couple of times. I think it plays. Just, it doesn't bend the G note there. And that is, you let the bend down, which we play, then 10th uh, fret on the B string, 12th fret on the G string, 10th fret on the G string, land on the 12th fret on the D string. And back to that lick again, I think. That is the same as before. And then you end with twice on the D string and uh, kind of a small bend on the 10th fret on the G and G string and maybe the B string is in there as well. Yeah. Uh, the next lick is uh, 12th fret on the D string, 12th fret on the A string, 10th fret on the G string, and then 10th fret again, G string, 12th fret on the D string. And then he does a quick pull off lick. Uh, I would play this with different fingers to get the, the kind of speed and accuracy needed for this. You can play it either with uh, middle two fingers or pinky and ring finger or whatever you want. But it's the uh, tw uh, 12th fret on the G string, 10th fret on the G string, 12th fret on the D string. It does that a couple of quick times over and over again there. Maybe even does the uh, includes the B string there as well. That in that case, maybe it's easier. So that that is kind of difficult to play. I would do it like this. Just use my ring finger. Do double pull off. So this lick should be familiar now. From uh, Your Love Is All Right and um, similar licks in other songs. And it's. Last part is just 13th, 12th, and 10th pull off. I've explained the lick so many times, so I guess you know it by now. After that, he plays on the D string 10th, 12th fret, a couple of times on the 12th fret, and then it does a huge bend on it. Which is up to the 
uh, 15th fret. Which is kind of hard to get. <laughs> Especially with my fingers right now. <laughs> sort of a muted chugga chugga part in between uh, and then he does that ah my fingers <laughs> Tenth fret on the G string, uh, bend on twelfth first. It's just 10th to 12th on the D string hammer on, and then just vibrato and hold that 12th fret and let it feed back, which again I can't do. Let's fill the part here. We need some volume for that. But yeah, that's it for it makes you want to cry. So it's time for the title track, Medusa. This solo is short but sweet. It starts with a bend on the 12th fret on the B string. You bend it all the way up to 15th fret. So. down here on the uh, G string I think it plays like that and it's first a real quick open G string and then it's a quick pull off on the fourth fret uh, fourth fret and second fret the open string still on the G string It's open string, third fret, slide up to the fourth. So it's really quick that pull off. third fret of the B string uh, to the fifth fret on the B string. So it's really hard to play that lick slow and get it to the correct timing, but I think it's somewhere along these lines. But even that isn't really that slow because that, that pull off lick is really, really fast. The next lick is one of those rock and roll cliche licks again. It's kind of slurred at the end, so I can't really hear exactly the notes he played, but I think it's it's there. So you 
gonna jump straight from the G string, the uh, 14th fret bend, to the 12th fret on the E string. Skip back and forth on the, on the G string between the 12th and 14th fret. So like that is 12th, uh, 14th fret on the G string bend. 12th fret on the B and E string to the 15th fret uh, bend on the B string. Uh, then it goes down to the 2nd uh, uh, and 4th fret on the G string again. Does a similar pull off lick, but lands on the second fret on the D string. Then open G string to the second fret bend on the G string. So that is that second fret bend on the G string and pluck the third fret on the B string as well. Then it goes up to the 12th fret, he plays a 12th fret G string, and then he plays a 12th fret G string and B string. Then he goes up to the 12th fret, and he hits the G string first, and then both the G and B string. Small bend, and the 14th fret, a bit of, big, uh, a, bit of a bigger bend, and then 12th fret again. So after that lick, plays the 7th fret and the 9th fret on the G string and bend the 9th fret up to the 11th. Let down again. Uh, so the last part of the solo here is a bend on the 2nd fret on the G and B string. You, I think it plays just a quick open G string before. That's a little bend. And then open G string to the 2nd fret D string. 2nd uh, fret G string. Hammer on open string to 1st fret on the G string. to the 4th, still in the G string, and then switch to the B string for the 3rd fret. And he, he just leaves the solo there. <laughs> he ends on, on that 3rd third, uh, third fret B string. And that's pretty much it. That was the entire of Medusa. <laughs> I want to say a thank you to my buddy Atticus Finch, I think his name is Joe. Thank you so much for the request and the generous donation to the tip jar. Thank you so much for watching, please like, subscribe and comment something nice down below. If you have any requests for other videos, let me know. Bye!